Hello. Hello. How are you doing? I'm good. And you? Good, good. Um, yeah, no, yeah, I've been keeping well, so things are going well. So, yeah, good. Good to so, see you anyway. It's so nice to see you too. I have been really like looking, looking forward to having you here uh, talking to us. So that's so, so nice. So great. Thank you so much uh, for taking the okay. time. Yeah. No, um, I'm really looking forward to it. So uh, I think the work that you're doing with your Stuttgart Society is uh, very good. So I'm looking forward to this conversation. So yeah. That's great. Thank you, Stefan. Um, well, let's start from the very beginning so that people can like get to know you like a little bit more. I know that many people already know you because you have been out and about talking about like stuttering. So many people probably know you, but okay. it would be great if you could please introduce yourself and tell us a little bit more about where you're from, what you do, please. Thank you. Yeah, so uh, I'm Stephen Green and I'm from Dublin in Ireland. And now I'm currently living down in the south of the country uh, in a city called Waterford. Um, so, and I, so what I do is for my job, I work as a social care worker in the field of in intellectual disability. Uh, so I'm working in a, res in, in a residential service um, for a house that does like five residents that actually live in the, in, in the house. Um, so yeah, and I've been doing that social care work for the past 20 years. So I've been doing it for like quite a long time. So, um, and it's a work that I feel really passionate uh, um, just the work that I do then as well. Um, on the structuring side of things, so uh, presently I, fa I fa facilitate a support group for people who stutter. Uh, so we have been meeting on an um, online basis uh, over the past year and a half now. Uh, previously, we uh, would have done this support meetings uh, face to face. And hopefully we will be able to get back to the face-to-face -face meeting soon. Um, I do I I uh, do these meetings under the umbrella of the Irish Stammering uh, Association, and I have also held the previous post of the chairman of the Irish Stammering Association in in the in the past. So I think then that's me anyway. So that's uh, that's me and uh, what I do. So. That sounds really cool and sounds like you have been, let's say, involved in like activities related to, to stuttering for a very long time. And how did like stuttering impacted your life? Uh, when did you realize that you like stutter? My first memory would have been going to a speech therapist when I was about five or six, um, my mother, uh, she took me to the speech therapist because she felt there wasn't a pro announcing um, some of my words properly. So, and I didn't, I, and I didn't really notice the stammering at, at that stage. Um, it was probably after a couple of the speech therapy sessions that the stuttering seemed to manifest it's it's uh, self then uh, so yeah it was probably around the age of five or six that I uh, started stuttering now it didn't really have much of a negative impact on my childhood because I don't really have many memories of like many memories of being bullied or any of them kind of things because I had a really good set of friends that I had at at the time um, and actually my family were like very good when it came to the whole stuttering thing now it was like like my family didn't really have much of the information that is maybe out now but then I think that they did the best that they could anyway so um from now what I would have noticed was when I was in school I would have 
maybe started to build up that fear of speaking. So uh, I remember sitting in the classroom and the teacher would be going around the class and um, this would be during the roll call. So uh, people would have to uh, say their name. So, and I would be counting the people just before it got to my turn anyway. And the whole build up of the fear of stuttering then. And so I suppose that would have been the negative side that I would have noticed um, earlier on. Um, but I don't think it kind of held me back as far as my interactions just with my friends and so on. It was probably more into my teenage years and my early adulthood that I would have noticed the negative um, impact of my stuttering. So I suppose the teenagers like moving to a secondary school. So so you're leaving, so you're leaving your primary school where you had all of your friends and you're moving to a much bigger school and like there's a total like new set of people there as well. So I suppose that's when I would have noticed I I would have done a lot of kind of holding back at that stage and uh, the fear of speaking would have kind of really kind of crept in then so but I didn't and at the same time I can't really remember any any stages where I was really bullied at all uh, but on the inside I felt I was holding back and the I suppose the the negative impact of stuttering of like not saying what you want to say when you want to say it anyway anyway um i remember in secondary school i was around i think i was around 15 or 16 and i would have had a lot of my teachers would have passed would have passed me over uh, when it came to speaking in a class and although i probably would have got a momentary re 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 relief uh, from being passed over but then that would soon pass and I would get the negative feelings that came with the fact that uh, yeah, she wasn't even picked. And um, so I think that that had an um, impact on myself then as well. But I did have the one teacher that would always ask, uh, that would always kind of ask me to read out in, in a class. And even though it, it, it was quite difficult at the time, um, but looking back, I I really kind of thanked him for for she put me into that situation. Then the fact that he didn't uh, treat treat me any differently to anyone else, you know, um, and I suppose that would have that would have been around the time I would have had my second a experience of speech therapy. So I would have been fifteen, sixteen, and um. And that teacher that was asking me to um, to read out in class, um, he asked me would I be interested in going to speech therapy. So I just checked with my parents, and and, and my parents said that um, it was fine. So I had my second experience of speech therapy, which was um, I would have went into to some. There's a famous college that's in Dublin called uh, Trinity College, and um, and then they had a speech and language therapy sec section there. So I remember um, getting just getting the bus into town, uh, and then I would have to hop on the bus, and I would have to say to the bus driver uh, then the right fare that I had to ask for, and I remember hopping on the bus and just stuttering away and blocking and so so actually this was quite a stressful situation so then I made it in so I made it into town for my speech therapy uh, session and I went up to the front door of the building that I was going into and I now I just thought I, I could just walk in the door and um, but then the door was locked and they had an intercom that was on the door. 
So I had to press the button on the intercom and the whole fear was just coming over me again. So so I had to kind of say my name and I and I now it's it, it took me about 10 minutes to build up to build up the courage to press that button, like you know, because uh because this was a building that was just off a very busy uh, main uh, main street. So so I remember kind of walking up and down and I finally kind of got the courage up and I kind of pressed the button and I blocked on my name. So I just got the, the whole silent block uh, going on. Um, but I actually made it into the session. And so, yes, yeah, so actually that would have been the start of my second uh, speech therapy that I did. As far as... Um, how I found that therapy, it it probably wasn't that useful for me because what I was being shown was I was being shown a fluency shaping a tech tech technique of a slowed speech, and um, and they would have given us all of this uh, work to do when we are at home uh, of listening to these slowed speech tapes and just trying to mimic um, our, um, just to mimic the same kind of speech. Now, I, I just felt that it wasn't very transferable out into the real world anyway. So, so that therapy would have lasted for a few weeks and, but I didn't really see any benefit any benefit of it then anyway so so i ended up just going back to my old uh stuttering behaviors that i would have done uh so yeah so that would be in my experience up to my teenage years and then like leaving and leaving school and going into the workplace um it's quite a difficult time as well because there's a lot of calm communication that is involved so I would have struggled quite a lot in like even just dropping in my CV into different places and um, the so that first kind of uh, point of contact just with with uh, somebody was actually quite difficult for me uh, but I end up actually just getting a few. Uh, so I would have done a few uh, different jobs uh, at at the time. But my stuttering would have always been would have always been at the forefront of my mind, and I would have always been uh, been holding back and the avoidance of words and maybe situations. Um, but then things kind of generally seemed to kind of get better like once I became a bit more kind of comfortable but I always felt that my stuttering was always the elephant in the room that nobody talked about like you know it was uh <laughs> it was it was the one thing that that I didn't feel comfortable kind of talking about so obviously um that discomfort would have being transferred onto the different people that I uh, would have been talking with then and so on. Um, I suppose, and I end up actually just, and I end up taking a job in social care then. Uh, I actually went to college and I got my degree in social care. And I remember, um, I remember I was actually doing, I was, I was doing a uh, quite well in a social care I was working in a I was, I was working in a day service for people with intellectual disabilities and I was second in charge at the time and um so so actually my work was like working out pretty pretty well then um oh yeah and I suppose the kind of catalyst for change would have been so my manager at the time, she was off on annual leave. So I was left in charge of the place that I was working. And there was this uh, one day when I received a phone call. Um, so and I kind of picked up the phone and I was saying, um, hi, this is Solis Center and this is 
and I just got a total block um, on my name. And the person at the other end of the line, uh, who happened to be a social worker at the time, um, she she had said, oh, sorry, could I please speak to one of the members of staff, you know? So, uh, so actually she had made the poor made the poor assumption because of my stuttering that I had been one of the people with uh, an intellectual disability that was in the service. And then she was asking, so uh, she was asking to speak to one of the staff members. So I was able to re again my calm exposure and actually say, actually, you're uh, speaking to Stephen uh, and I am the acting manager here, you know. So I think that that moment was the catalyst for me to go, OK, look, you have to do something about your uh, speech here now. So, um, so yes, so I suppose that moment in time actually made me look into different things then. So uh, that was when I reached out to the Irish Stammering Association and I noticed that they had a support group that was up and running. Um, so I started attending this support group for people who uh, stuttered then. And uh, this was just, this was like a breath of fresh air for me because I had never really met other people who had stuttered previously. And even just listening to their stories, um, feeling the empathy from them. And um, so this actually really was the start of my journey to the acceptance of my stuttering and being able to be open uh, about it. So I was attending the support group for a few months and that was, and after that time, I found out about a therapy program that was uh, running. Uh, it was being run in Dublin at the time. It was a residential um, therapy program that was run by three speech and language therapists that were here. And uh, I have to say that this therapy program, it really kind of changed my life. Like, um, so the whole therapy program was based on being open about your stuttering and being able to work on the avoidance behaviors and just to openly stutter. So that was, that was a big change in my kind of mindset then because I would have went from somebody who was hiding the stuttering at all costs, uh, doing word substitution, the avoidance of, um, like, I remember at the time, um, I would get my wife would be, so uh, she would be doing a lot of the phone calls when it came to dealing with uh, dealing with all of your bills and the kind of you, the utility companies, uh, even the small things of uh, ringing, of uh, just phoning for a takeaway on a Saturday night, I would always say, oh yeah, maybe, um, maybe if, maybe if uh, you want to ring for the Chinese then or something. So, so I had all of these uh, uh, avoidance kind of behaviors that I built up just throughout the years. And from going on this uh, therapy program, um, I was able to strip away a lot of the avoidance behaviors that I had been uh, doing then. And um, like even the kind of small things like um, I had the speech therapist was telling me, look, Stephen, um, it's actually OK to stutter because like because if you're stuttering as an adult, there is a big chance that you are going to stutter for the rest of your life. So rather than um, like burying your head in the in the sand, maybe you can choose the way that you want to stutter then. So uh, that was a big kind of wake up call for uh, me then. So I have to say like, uh, so that was back in 2006 uh, when I did that therapy program. And I really haven't kind of like looked uh, back since. Um, so, and I would have 
so I would have went back to this so report group that I then that I was with, and um, so I ended up uh, taking up a facilitation role there. So um, because I figured out that I was actually quite good with my facilitation skills, um, so I ended up running one of the so report groups, and then I ended up joining. So I ended up joining the board of the Irish Stammering Association. So I became a actually board member. And then further on, then I became the chairman of the Irish Stammering Association for a period of three, I think it was uh, three and a half years anyway. So, so yeah, so I think that my journey has really been one from holding back in relation to my stuttering to being open about my stuttering and being able to kind of say, being able to say what I want to say when I want to say it. Like, actually, I, I just figured that I've been talking for like a long time here. So I will let you jump in. Feel free. <laughs> no, I, I mean, feel really free to add whatever you want to take your time. Don't worry. But my next question, I'm not sure, but maybe you have, oh, maybe you have already already actually answered is what was the turning point in your in your journey of acceptance and what helped you to better deal with the challenge of of stuttering yeah like and i think i probably said like the turning point was that moment in a walk when um Phone when call, I, right? yeah yeah so when i kind of walk colleague um uh, just picked up from my stuttering that she got the impression that I was a person with an intellectual disability. So, but it was also getting to the point where I was, I was kind of sick and tired of the holding back and, uh, and my stuttering being the elephant in the room that nobody was talking about. So now it's it actually took me till I was in my in my late twenties. I I think I was like twenty eight or twenty nine, uh, to actually come to that uh, realization. Also, you know, so, um, but I think that that was the turning point, and I think what really helped me was definitely getting involved with this or uh, report group with the Irish Stammering Association. Uh, being able to openly talk about how I felt about my stuttering and then going on the therapy program then in 2006 uh, made a massive dif difference for me because like and I don't think it was even like I don't think it was it was even about learning the the speech uh, tech techniques it was it was changing how I felt about my stuttering. So it was changing from the feelings of like guilt and shame to the feelings of like um, that, okay, um, it is all about being able to say what you want to say rather than focusing on your fluency or um, like not having a tolerance for my stuttering. So, so I think that that would be in their tournament point. So, yeah. If you could go back in time, what, what would you tell the 10 year old Steven? Um, I would tell them, look, everything is going to work out. Like, you know, so uh, everything will work out. It uh, maybe take like, it might take a bit more struggle than normal, but things do work out. Like you will end up getting the job that you want to do. You will end up meeting the person that you want to spend the rest of your life with. Uh, things will work out, you know. So because, um, and I suppose you'd be more you'd be more thinking as maybe as a teenager, you're more thinking, oh, um, how like how am I ever going to get the job that I want to do or um, how will I ever meet the person that I want to spend the rest of my life with um, so yeah no I, I think the main thing is to just yeah that I would tell my younger self that things do work out 
uh, it uh, might take a little more struggle. Um, but I think that that struggle, it ends up being a blessing in a little way, like because I think I've spoken previously about the resilience that your stuttering can actually give you as a person who uh, stutters. And it also gives you different uh, qualities. Now, look, um, like there's some days when you're stuttering, it, 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 it can be like a pain and so on. But I can see the qualities that my own stuttering actually has given me. So I, I think I think I'm a pretty good listener just to our people. Um, I think I have a lot of empathy for the struggles that different people will actually go through. Um, I think my stuttering has given me a lot of patience. So patience for myself and patience for other people. Um, and I think it's important to be able to pass that message on to young people who stutter then that you can reach like um, you can reach the dreams that you have, like, you know, uh, that your that your stuttering doesn't have to hold you back. Like um, you can do everything that you choose to uh, do anyway. So. I agree with you. I think a lot has to do with what you really focus on, right? Mm. Yeah. And, and it is true. I think like the train can also teach us to be more patient, to be more, to be more like resilient. It can teach us different things. It all, but it's again, what do you want to focus on? Do you want to focus on the problem, like the challenge that you have to go through? Or do you want to focus on what you already have and what you can actually give back to the world, to yourself, you know? Yeah, and I, and I think it's important to talk about how um, how the kind of struggle uh, uh, around stuttering is a lot of that struggle is everything we are trying to do not to stutter, like, you know, so the kind of holding back, the avoidance behavior, the words uh, substitution, that's all tied into everything we are doing to try not to uh, stutter. Uh, so if if we can figure out a way to just stutter quite easily, and because like you can be as good as a calm, as a calm communicator as anyone else, um, even if you are still stuttering, because part of um, part of part of the job that I do now is um, I um, I do also train train staff in the management of challenging behavior. So um, I would train staff in a classroom situation, and I would stutter during the training sessions that I do. Um, but the but the way I stutter is I will keep a good uh, eye con eye contact with this person that I'm speaking to. Um, I will stutter quite easily. Um, so so that the person will see the stuttering, but then they don't necessarily see the struggle that is associated with it. Then, so. I think one of the challenges is that even once you reach that kind of more like acceptance that you are fine with like stuttering, I find it hard to change the usual behaviors that we had before, you know, because they come so naturally, you, you don't even think about them, them, like sometimes you just do it because you grew up doing it every single day, 24 seven, and it's normal for you. So I, I think that that kind of like shift can be pretty challenging, actually. Yeah, yeah, uh, definitely, because I'm thinking of the secondary behaviors that I would have always done. So I would have used a lot of like filler words to try and stop myself from stuttering. So I would have used a lot of actually and them and them um, and, um, actually and I'd be throwing these all into the sentences and and it is it is all done to try and stop myself from stuttering. So I'm I'm at probably trying to get away from that stuttering moment. And look, these behaviors that they don't go over uh, 
overnight. So it it, it takes a lot of time to actually work on them because it's it's true what you say that they these behaviors have been with us through through our, our whole life. You know what I mean? So um so I don't think Rome was built in in a day and I don't think we are going to get rid of these secondary behaviors in a short period of a time. But it's it's so important to be open about your stuttering then uh, because I think that can take the pressure off people to try and fill into to try and fill into the fluent world that we see. So I um, because I think if we aim for that fluency, I think that's when we can really kind of trip up and that's when really the secondary behaviors really kind of creep in more than anyway so yeah and it's interesting i don't know for you but sometimes it uh, happens to me that when i actually realize i am being very fluent when, when i think wow i haven't started then i start blocking again so it's, yeah. <laughs> it's pretty- yeah 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 definitely and and i'm always quite conscious like um I'm always quite conscious not to get into, not to like, not to get into like a false sense of fluency then, like, you know, so uh, what I mean by false sense of fluency is maybe using the kind of tricks that we would have done in the past to just to appear fluent. Um, but, But also I think it's important to kind of give yourself a break as well, because like, uh, cause we have spent so much time with stuttering being at the forefront of your mind um i think it's good to be able to put it at the back for a little while and then so so actually that if you are in a conversation with somebody um that you're not thinking about the time that you are going to block or the time that you are going to stutter that 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 you can just you can in 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 enjoy the kind of conversation that you're in anyway like you know so that you're enjoying come come communicating just with people then as well so. in a practical way what has changed in your life since you like accepted the stuttering since you became more um since you came into terms with it what has changed for you um well, I think I, I, I definitely think I'm talking a lot more. So like I'm, I'm uh, now look, I've, I have always kind of loved to uh, talk anyway. So, but, uh, but yeah, no, I definitely think I'm being able to say, being able to kind of say what I want to say when I want to say it maybe has been a big kind of practical thing. Um, and also I've, so I have stripped back on the avoidances that I would have done. So, um, so kind of talking on the phone is actually no longer uh, a problem for me. So if I have to ring up the bank, if I have to ring up for a takeaway, like, like um, damn things aren't an issue that they would have been previously. Um the practical things also yeah just being able to i i uh, think the big thing for me is the authenticity so being able to show you show my true self uh whether whether i'm stuttering or whether i'm actually not stuttering whereas previously i think that would have been the big thing uh not being able to show my or or authentic self uh due maybe just due to the hold them back anyway so yeah and uh, what what advice would you give to people who who is there cool um now i uh, took a few notes um uh, on this anyway so uh, it should be cool so yeah i would say um because we have all heard like people giving us ad ad uh, their voice as people who start are telling us to uh, think about what you want to say to take a deep breath t- to be more confident 
but this uh, a voice then this doesn't normally work because like um, it is all aimed at the so oppression of your stuttering. So the advice I would give to people is to be open about your stuttering. So to be able to talk about it, talk about it with your family and friends um, and just to try and go out of your comfort zone. So like being able to have a tolerance for your stuttering. So I would say, um, yeah, so that the more you will uh, avoid stuttering, that the more that you are going to stutter. So the more you can be open about your stuttering, I think it takes away the struggle that a lot of us have. Um, like, I will, if I, if I can share um, Joseph Sheen's, his uh, two principles when it comes to stuttering is, uh, number one is your stuttering doesn't doesn't hurt you. And uh, number two is your fluency doesn't do you any good. So, um, and I think what Sheen means by uh, these principles is your stuttering doesn't hurt you, which means that it's everything else we are trying to do not to stutter that is hurting us as people who stutter. So it isn't necessarily the stuttering but it's everything that we do to try not to stutter um, that actually hurts us. And your fluency doesn't do you any good. So I think by aiming for fluent speech, I, I think that's where we can fall into the trap of using all of the tricks and for us to appear fluent. Because at the end of the day, like we are not like, the so-called kind of fluent speakers. We are people who stutter and then that we will stutter for the rest of our lives, but it doesn't have to have the struggle that is associated with it. So I would say, so don't focus on the fluency. Um, focus on saying what you want to, to say, whether you stutter or whether you don't stutter anyway. So. So that would be one of my things. Um, yeah, so just to be open. So to be open about your stuttering, and it's very important to be yourself. So just be who actually you are. Um, so don't hold back. So don't hold back because of your fear of uh, stuttering. Um, just show people the person that you really are anyway. So. So I think that's some of my words of uh, voice anyway, so. Those are very wise words and very good, uh, let's say, advices, so. Yeah, and then I would also say to people, just don't be hard on yourself as well, because, because there's a lot of people that will have the negative feelings when it comes to stuttering. So maybe they might have a moment, uh, maybe when they stuttered, when they went into a shop or maybe they're on the phone and they stuttered. And, and then the next thing that this stuttering moment dwells with the person maybe for 12 to 24 hours and and it's and it just forms into this kind of negative talk i would just tell people not to be hard on yourself because like you are focusing on maybe just one a moment of a struggle whereas there was probably it was probably more inter interactions during that day when you felt that things uh, went uh, really well but then people tend to focus on the one negative moment anyway so so i uh, don't be too hard on yourself as uh, somebody who stutters so you know. this is a really good point because many times we tend to focus on the negatives and on the things that make it that make us feel like embarrassed sometimes we we like we might be fluent for 30 minutes but those two minutes that we really blocked <gasps> They destroyed yeah. the entire 30 minutes that we were able to talk like fluently without any problem. So it's like it's hard to let go of of those moments where we block more, where we like stutter more. Of course, mm -hmm. stuttering the level of like severity changes 
according to the person. So of course, for some, for some people, they have a very severe like like stutter. So for them, it might be hard, really, really, really hard to not feel bad about how they're talking. But at the end of the day, we should always remind ourselves that it's not how I speak, it's what I'm saying that should really matter, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, um, that is so in, in important that actually people come, come to that realization that it's like it is in how how you're saying it it is actually what you're saying you know so um and also i would say to people uh i think it's important to educate yourself when it comes to stuttering then so um read so read the latest uh re re research that is out there like you know so uh the kind of there's, there's so much kind of re research that is out there so there is kind of research done on the stigma of a stuttering. There's a lot of research done on the many aspects of a stuttering. So I think it's important for people to educate themselves when it comes to a stuttering. So, yeah. yeah, there's nothing wrong with the pe- like the person who like stutter. It's the problem of the person who is not patient enough to listen, is not like empathic enough to listen, to take time to listen, you know? But sometimes the problem is actually in society. You know? mm-hmm. Oh yeah, t- t- definitely. Because if you look at some of the social model stuff that is out in relation to um, stuttering now, because um, cause I think people should be able to feel in 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 a powered uh, to be able to speak as somebody who uh, stutters then so if they feel they are being this this discriminated uh, against um like i think that the legislation is out there so that if they feel um if it comes to a walk kind of situ- if it comes to a situation in a walk um I uh, think people can uh, look at the look at the so reports that are in place there. Then that if they do feel that they are being this discriminated, uh, are then against anyway. So yeah. maybe um, can I just say to people to just get involved with the platform that you have set up as well because I think it's um I think it's an important space for people who stutter then as well because. Look, we have the social media groups, the kind of Facebook groups and so on. Uh, but I think uh, maybe a platform such as the one that you have set up uh, would be very beneficial for people who stutter then as well. Because like you can actually link in with kind of like-minded people uh, the same as yourself, but also because you have recently uh, added in some of the professionals when they uh, when it comes to uh, stuttering so um, I think it's a good uh, re resource for people who uh, stutter then as well anyway so people join the stuttering so sorry to you anyway so thank you so much Stephen it was a okay. pleasure to talk to you it was a pleasure to see you in the video sure. like this and thank you so much again for being here today. okay pleasure excellent talk to you soon okay i'll talk to you soon thank you bye bye